Hey guys, today I'd like to go over the clothing compartment for my new bug out bag. As a lot of you know, I'm doing a redesign of my bug out bag, and for my new one I have everything organized into different compartments, and I've been going one by one and completing all these compartments. And today I'd like to go over the clothing compartment. Now it's been a while since I made one of these videos, one because uh, it's been a lot of research involved for the clothes, and then two, it's taken a little bit of money too. It's a lot more expensive for me to buy clothes than it is to buy hygiene equipment, for example. So the approach that I went for this particular compartment for the clothes is I was looking less at other people's bug out bag designs and what they have for clothes and I was heavily influenced by what ultralight backpackers are doing because I wanted this is uh, for clothes you know this is my jacket that I wear you know EDC and as you can see it's fairly large and I wanted to make sure that I had uh, you know, all my clothes in a very compact space because uh, you know I'm starting to run out of a little bit of backpack room and I wanted to also keep it as light as possible. So what I came up with was, uh, this is one of those waterproof bags, but this is my clothing compartment. And I have everything in here that I, that I think I would need uh, in a bug out scenario. So this thing, let me get the scale out really quick. It's, it's weighing a little less than four pounds at this point. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> sometimes it depends on when I weigh it, but <laughs> right around four pounds. Uh, so, and what I did for this is I went with a, what the ultralight backpackers are doing, and you know, a lot of experienced backpackers, is they, they go with the base layer and the insulation layer and the shell layer. So that's, that's what I went on this. I wanted a, a layered approach to it. And as you can see, it's fairly compact. I mean, this is, this is not too big. It looks about the size of maybe a sleeping bag in, in the backpack. And so I have my clothes in here. I also have some items as part of my clothing compartment that aren't in here just because I want to have quicker access to them. So they'll be, you know, on the, in a pocket or in a compartment in the backpack or, or possibly hanging outside of the backpack. And I'll show all of these, all of those to you later. So. Uh, this is probably going to be a multi-part video because there's a lot of things to discuss. And, uh, you know, another example of going ultralight for this was uh, there's some things that you know a lot of people use boots for their uh, you know bug out bags, leather boots that are waterproof, and these are fairly heavy. I, I, don't, I forget what brand these are. Uh, so I went with a different approach with that. Instead of going boots, I went with uh, trail runners, and just to try to keep everything light as possible. So, and then also because since I am in an urban environment, there's some things that I thought that it was more suited for a rural bug out than for an urban bug out. So, it's rather than doing it, uh, showing you all the items that are in here on the desk, I'm going to have to go out to a larger space because there's a lot of things to go over. And then I'll show you how I'm kind of wearing those as well. So, I hope you enjoy this video on the clothing compartment for my new bug out bag. So, let's start going through these items. Alright, so I'm out here in the living room. I wanted to go over a couple things before I started digging into this. Uh, number one, I'm, I'm not suggesting that you guys get the same thing I got, I, because I did spend a little bit of money on this. The only way I was able to justify it was to promise myself that not only would this be used for my bug out bag, but also for general backpacking hiking. Uh, so I was able to justify it that way. Uh, two, I wanted to focus on two, on two major things just because of the area that I live in. Since I wish to live in the Seattle area, uh, number one, I wanted to focus on making sure I was protected from rain because it does rain a lot over here. Uh, so I, I, some of those gear, I, I did go maybe a little bit more than what uh, someone else might not do just because of the region I live. I imagine if you lived in Arizona, you're going to have to make sure that you, it's going to be hot over there. And if you lived in Alaska, you know, it's the same thing. So uh, then no, number two, I always remember from... <laughs> When I watched Forrest Gump, one thing I remembered is that uh, Lieutenant Dan always, he was said to take care of your feet. And that's what I wanted to do for this as well. So I spent some money on my feet. I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, the best possible shoes. Not the best possible, but good shoes, good socks, good feet support. Because I am going to be, you know, carrying uh, about 30 to 35 pounds. Plus I have an infant. Maybe I'll have to, if he's getting tired, walking. If, for example, if we have to walk somewhere, I might have to carry him uh, other gear. So I wanted my feet to be well taken care of. So before I dig into here, let's talk about some of the items that I, kind of my general loadout clothes. And those are not included in here. So uh, to start it off, let's go over with the pants. What's, first off, here's, a, here's what my bug out bag currently looks like. And for, I'm thinking of having these loadout clothes just right here for immediate access. Because a lot of times I'm wearing slacks or I'm, not, I'm wearing you know, clothing that's not really suited for any kind of extended hiking. So I'm thinking of having just some general loadout clothes right here. So to start it off, let's go with the pants. And so I've had these pants for a while, so I was happy that I was able to reuse them for this compartment. These are uh, the REI convertible pants. Uh, they're, they're meant for hiking. They're 
I really, really like these. If it's, if it's cold out, it, they keep me warm. If it's hot out, it keeps me cool. Uh, they're, they're good for water. They, you know, they don't stay wet. They have a lot of different pockets and they convert to shorts. So uh, that's number one what I have. So the REI convertible hiking pants. Uh, the second item is uh, the t-shirt and <laughs> th this one killed me. I, I, I've never spent this much on a t-shirt before but I wanted, if I was going to wear one t-shirt I wanted to make sure it was a good one because as, as we talked about in some of my other videos that uh, hygiene is important to me so I, I don't want to be stinking because if you know if I smell like a homeless guy I'm going to probably be treated like one too. So what I went with is this is the Smart Wool uh, t-shirt and it's, it is expensive. <laughs> Uh, it, at REI, this thing costs 65 bucks, but <laughs> it's really nice. It's uh, yeah, since it's made of wool, you're not it's you're going to be able to uh, wear it for an extended period of time without smelling as bad. So, it, and I've I've worn it around a little bit now, and it keeps me uh, again like the pants. It keeps me cool when it's hot, and it keeps me fairly warm when it's cold out too. And so uh, that's what I went with. I went with green because I started getting a lot of you know items that are black. In here, and I didn't want to look like some ninja or something, so I wanted some items that just look had some color to it, but there were general earth tones. I didn't want some bright orange or yellow or something like that. So uh, that's uh, the shirt that I went with. Uh, next, let's go over the hat. This one took me a little bit. I took a lot of research on this, and I was looking at different uh, hiking hats and those big crocodile Dundee <laughs> looking things and other REI lightweight hats. And what I, the problem I have is that I have a huge head. And it's, uh, it's hard for me to fit into different hats. And most of the time I wear hats, I wear these Kangol hats like this and I'm able to fit in them. This is made of wool, this one. So that's what I went with this as well. I got a black Kangol hat. Uh, it's, it's made of wool. Yeah, it's not really meant for hiking. Uh, it might stink a little bit, but I wear this year round anyway. And I wanted, also wanted to just kind of feel normal too. So if I was wearing this, I would just look normal like I normally do. If I was wearing some kind of uh, you know, crocodile Dundee hat that's waterproof, I, I would feel a little bit out of place. I wouldn't feel like myself. So I wanted to feel like myself in this case. All right, next, uh, let's see, is, is the shoes. So uh, these are what I went with. And I told you earlier that I didn't want to go with boots. I went with a cross trainer. These are the, the Merrill uh, ventilators. And uh, they're, they're fairly lightweight. They're about 1.5 pounds. And uh, what I went, I went with these just, just because they were light. I, didn't, I felt that they would be better in an urban scenario if I'm going to be on concrete a lot. And uh, they, they are not waterproof. But no shoe that I wear at any time is waterproof. And I've never really had a problem, even if I'm outside, you know, in the rain and stuff. So that's what I went with for my shoes. Uh, in the shoes right here, I have some socks. And these are uh, smart wool hiking socks. Uh, I went with smart wool. I tried to go with smart wool as much as I could on my base layer and anything that's really close to my body just because of, uh, you know, one, the, you know, the hygiene part. I, I didn't want these things stinking after a while. And, uh, and then I just know that the, the wool is uh, pretty desirable for... Uh, you know, for, for for hiking, for wicking, for you know, moisture, for you know, being able to dry out quicker. So I have a, just a pair of socks in the shoes as well. So these is this is kind of my loadout clothes that I'm going to be having. I have some other accessories as well. Uh, one, I have a, a pair of gloves that I'm going to be keeping on the outside. Uh, these, what, these what, what brand is this? I forget. They're handyman. Uh, but I actually have two set of uh, working gloves, work gloves. I, I wanted to have my hands protected and I wanted to have, to have two. I don't have any kind of, you know, uh, civilian type uh, snow gloves or anything. So this is what I went with. And I have two. I have one in the, in the compartment too, so I'll show you. All right, so those are my loadout clothes. I'm going to move those over here. So everything is going to be kind of layered off of these clothes. So let me set these off. Make sure you can still see everything. All right. All right, let's dig down into it. Special thanks to, to Bolden87 for giving me this waterproof bag. It was really nice. Okay, so as you can see, yes, I do have a second pair of gloves. These are Dewalt. These are work gloves. Uh, I really like them. I, I wear them when I'm driving in the wintertime, and uh, it doesn't get that cold in Washington. It, it's not like a, I'm not living in Minnesota or anything. So, But I did want to have a second pair of work gloves, so I have those there. Next, uh, this is the, the same hat that I have in my EDC bag. Uh, this is uh, it's made by Mountain Hardware. I think it's uh, 
Polar Tech, I forget the exact name of it, but it does fit my large head and it keeps me extremely warm. I'm extremely warm. I, I've been to Idaho and to Sun Valley, Idaho with this, and it was negative 10 degrees, and this thing kept me plenty warm. So uh, that's the hat that I chose for cool weather and maybe for sleeping as well. Next, these are, uh, this might be a little bit weird. No, these are not socks. These are armbands, and they're made by uh, Smart Wool again. <laughs> so I was deb debating whether to go with uh, a, having a long sleeve shirt to, you know, in addition to the t-shirt that I had, and I just couldn't find one that I liked that uh, I thought would work well and uh, that would be able to store in my system as well. So this is the what I went with instead. These are armbands that I would be in wearing in conjunction with the Smart Wool t-shirt. Uh, and so if I, if I was, uh, you know, walk, bugging out or hiking in the early part of the day where it was a little bit colder, I could have these on. And as the temperature started to grow, as it started to get hotter, I could easily take these off without having to dig into my bug out bag and grab uh, another shirt for the clothing compartment. I could take these off, put them in my pocket, and I can continue going without taking any of my gear off. So I went with a smart wool armbands. See, here's a backup pair of the smart wool socks. I have three sets of socks, one to wear, one clean one, and one that might be wet, and I, I washed it, for, for example. So I do have three in here. You've seen this uh, jacket uh, in, a, in a previous video that I showed you. This is made by Marmot. It's extremely light. It's, this is going to be part of my shell layer. I'll put the exact uh, the brands of everything, so if I, forget, if I space on the exact... This is, uh, I forget, the, the micro shell or something like that. I'll put it down in the description down below. Uh, but I've showed you this jacket before. It's extremely light, it's uh, waterproof, and uh, it, this is part of my shell layer. It has a nice hood on it as well, and it's very, very compactable. I mean, you could put this thing down extremely small. So this is part of my shell layer, the marmot jacket. Again, because I live in Washington, I want a good rain protection. This is one of those items that I spend a little bit more than maybe others might do. So, here's the third smart wool sock. I tried go I tried putting these in vacuum sealed bags, uh, but I found that it was easier to store just out like this. Uh, and, it, and because this is waterproof, I wasn't really needed for the for the protection of water. Uh, but I was trying to get this thing a little smaller, but I, I, you know, I determined that it was better just to keep them out, out loose like that for me. All right, next. Let's see, what are these? Oh yeah, these are, these are my uh, long underwear. Uh, they're made by, let's see, these are uh, Polar Tech, lightweight, uh, long since I'm tall. Uh, long underwear, they're black. I went with the lightweight kind, just mainly because of the space issue. And I've worn these before to, for example, for the football games and stuff when it's cold out and when it's snowy. And if I combine these with these, uh, the REI convertible pants, I find that my legs are fairly warm. So, uh, so I went with the Polar Tech lightweight uh, long underwear. I also have the Polar Tech lightweight, the, the top as well. I think that's going to probably be next. Okay, so here's the matching. So these are, this would be part of my base layer then. And this one's uh, tall as well. So these are both fairly light, uh, lightweight, and uh, they, you know, they come packed pretty, pretty small. And I, I find that these, this keeps me warm. So this is part of my, my base layer then. And probably also for sleeping. So for sleeping, I probably have a, you know, wear the long underwear, uh, some socks, and then the hat maybe. It's continuing on. So next, what I have here, this is the Smart Wool Balaclava. Uh, it's, uh, again, it's, uh, it's going to be on my skin, and I wanted to have wool in that case. And uh, so I went with the Smart Wool brand, and it, it fits my heads, because there's a couple of them that were fairly tight when I put them on. Uh, so uh, I, I've worn this thing before in a, you know, very cold settings up in Mount Rainier, for example, and it worked really great. So I wanted to have that, too, for, for cold weather for the insulation layer. So I'm running a little, I want to take a little break right now, reset up some gear. So let's continue on going through the remaining items in the clothing compartment. So uh, stay tuned for part two.